this is a torture device. It's like a science torture device. Right now, it's testing the strength of this material that looks like leather, but is actually mycelium, the thin fibers that feed fungi. If you look hard enough in the woods or my refrigerator, you'll find plenty. For an analogy, you might think about the roots and stem of a plant. In this case, the fruit would be the mushrooms. And mycelium is the vast network that supports that organism. The way mycelium grows, with fibers that intersect and connect and then bond, is almost like watching fabric weave itself together. It does naturally what we've spent millennia teaching machines to do. Why do this? Cowhides are some sort of byproduct or co-product of the beef and dairy industries. And sustainability is a major factor in all of that. The cattle industry is one of the largest polluters in the world, in terms of greenhouse gases as well as water pollution. And sustainability aside, it's time for a new material that can take us into the future. Vine mycelium really represents just a complete paradigm shift in the way that we're going to think about materials for industries that have been very fixed for a very, very long time. This is Hard Reset, a series about rebuilding our world from scratch. That's Sophia Wang, fine artist and co-founder of MycoWorks. People love leather for so many reasons. Because it's cool. Boss is wearing leather pants. There's the history and specificity of leather having come from an animal, so it is the trace of life. Yes, and cool, and totally rad, and awesome. And then there's also the amazing way that it performs, where over time, it achieves this beautiful patina, and it molds to form, it becomes very personal. Yes, we agree, it's cool. Anyway, the question is how do you recreate that with something that is decidedly not a dead cow? Fine mycelium begins with a process that's actually quite familiar if you think about the agricultural production of mushrooms. Mycelium is grown in trays, and these trays could be any size, so they could theoretically make sheets of mycelium that are 20 feet across without any seams or breaks. Leather just can't do that. Our closed tray system enables total control over the growth environment. We are able to optimize each sheet of fine mycelium as it grows. For their customers, say a clothing company that needs to make tens of thousands of jackets, that mycelium can be grown to exact specifications. Thickness, softness, color, pliability. That's where this lab comes in. So one of the tests that we actually perform is tensile testing, and it's pulling a material apart until it breaks. This is a Ballyflex machine. We put samples on here and run them up to 100,000 cycles to make sure that the flexibility is there and that we can make a product that's going to last. So this machine right here is a quantitative machine that can tell us how soft leather is. Even if you are producing it in mass quantities, there's still the uniqueness of each natural manifestation. Mycelium is a living, natural fiber, has its own signature grain and performance and hand feel. We've been able to push this process forward in a way that's more like a biotech or, or a more traditional manufacturing process that's tightly controlled. We have some trays that are running material for, say, handbags, other materials that are being built for shoes. And so within a plant, we can very easily customize what's going on in each tray based on the orders that we receive from our customers. The masked man here is Matt, the CEO of MycoWorks, not the Lone Ranger. Let's leave it at that. We're actually creating new types of properties in things that might look familiar at first, such as a collection of mycelial cells, but manipulating those cells into a new structure, things such as enhanced durability, incredible softness, um, you know, the ability to add chemistry like dyes, to turn it into something that is familiar to us, like leather, but really is so much more. It's tempting to think of this as something to replace leather. That's the closest thing we already have in terms of look and feel and function. But this is really something much different. We look at the incredible growth of the luxury and fashion industries over the past 20 or 30 years, and in turn, the huge growth in the supply of leather for all of the fast fashion, all of the cars, all of the things that use leather now. And we see that what's occurred in the industry 
is that leather has moved more and more towards plastics. And the reason is really simple. Leather production is the byproduct or co-product of the beef and dairy industries. It's a supply chain that doesn't scale. The fashion industry can't just say, hey, I'm gonna turn up a knob this year. We need more leather, so we're gonna go find more leather. So it's an industry that is not positioned for scale. But mycelium is a material whose qualities can be highly controlled and grown in limitless quantities. It can also be grown in multiple dimensions, not just flat sheets. It might feel like leather, but it's as adaptable as plastic. And that adaptability was part of the idea from the start. Just look at the work of artist Bill Ross, one of the co-founders of MycoWorks, who pioneered the use of fungus as a material. Phil Ross is a San Francisco-based artist who has worked with natural and living materials for over three decades. He was growing sculptures and art objects and architectural structures out of mycelium and exhibiting them around the world. Phil Ross's work isn't just about using mycelium to replace a building material. It's about rethinking materials from the ground up, uh, literally, because because mushrooms grow in the ground. Phil's work, I would say, is foundational to our current understanding of what mycelium can do, and we're really just scratching the surface. What's important here is to expand the way we think about the very concept of materials. How do we make the stuff that goes onto our bodies or into our structures? For example, imagine when we travel to Mars and build a sustainable colony. We're not gonna take cows, at least not for a while. And we're not gonna have access to petroleum or cotton or wool the same way we would here on Earth. But we'd still need flexible materials that could be ultra strong or ultra soft and reusable so we wouldn't have to grow from scratch every time. A material like this that can be soft or rigid and can be grown from our waste products and turned back into compost for soil might be a crucial part of living sustainably on a place like Mars. And even though most of us aren't going to Mars anytime soon, the same types of constraints are quickly becoming the reality for us on this planet as well. I don't think leather's going away, and I don't think plastic's going away. I think that eventually those materials are gonna run into even bigger constraints, even bigger walls than they are today. A material like fine mycelium is gonna be able to pick up that slack. New materials, new possibilities, new paradigms for working with nature this is the promise of biotechnology and why fine mycelium as a practice and a system and a way of growing the future of materials is so exciting. It feels like the sky's the limit. Come back next time for another episode of Hard Reset. Subscribe to Freethink to watch our other original series and documentaries about technology and people that are changing our world. 